Okay, on this one, this is a little bit more involved. We're going to talk about a three-point saddle. And we're going to be very specific because the manufacturers of benders typically have instructions in their manuals for a 45 and 22 and a half degree three-point saddle. And that's the go-to degrees and the go-to saddle. We've got some information over here in our grid, kind of like the most common three-point saddles would be like a two inch. That's a kind of a light jump over something, a four inch and a six inch. The numbers in the middle of this grid is talking about our pipe shrinkage. Well, we're going to have pipe shrinkage because if we're going to bend a straight piece of pipe into this configuration, these, these end, this end that we're starting on is going to start coming backwards. It's going to start shrinking. So what happens is we add, for two inch, we add three, three eighths of an inch to our overall measurement for mark A. For four inch, it's three quarters of an inch we add. For six inch, it's inch and an eighth of an inch that we add. So the idea is that we're looking at trying to jump over a circular or something that would fit in this radius. Typically, this can be a circular pipe or obstruction that's in a method that looks kind of like what we got drawn here. There is a three different points here, and there's an A measurement, an A mark that's most important, and that's where the pipe shrinkage is actually concerned. So I'm going to put here with this A mark, we're going to talk about the shrinkage. And we're going to deal with the shrinkage only to the A mark. The B and C marks are just a simple reference back to A to whatever we're trying to do. In this example I'm showing, we've got a four inch obstruction that's measured from the top of the obstruction to the plane in which we're dealing with, that's to the center of the obstruction. We need to know that. Now, if our measurement, let's say, is 30 inches from where our starting point is to the obstruction, it's a simple math. So if we measure from where we're starting to the center of our obstruction, we come up with 30 inches, our math would look like this because we get a four inch, so 30 inches, we got a four inch obstruction. We'll look at our little reference chart that I've created over here, and there's examples we'll show on the video. This four inch, we're going to add three quarters of an inch to that. And then our B and C marks are going to be measured at 10 inches. What does that equal? Here's how it works. We're going to add for our shrinkage plus three quarters of an inch. So our total measurement for A is going to be 30 and three quarters of an inch. Not Real hard, right? So this one, our reference for our A mark is going to be 30 and 3 quarters of an inch for A. Everything else, once we establish where A is, A is taking care of the shrinkage, laying this out on a piece of pipe. Then we're going to come back from A for our B measurement. Well, if we're dealing with 4 inch, right, we've already got a cheat chart, uh, cheat notes, it's simple. This is going to be 10 inches. From A to B, if we're looking at it this way, will be 10 inches. And from A to C, same thing, right? It'll be 10 inches. Once we've established A, everything references from A. Now we've got our piece of pipe. It's got three marks on it. Our A is compensating for the pipe shrinkage for a four inch raise and a three point saddle. Using 22 and a half on the B and C, and 45 on the A. Now, when using a hand bender, we do have to use the rim notch that's associated with that hand bender. All benders have a rim notch or a location that says, for a saddle bend, even in the manual, it has a notification placement. Uh, most of them have a rim notch in that. We're going to use that notch. So it's not going to be the arrow for the A. Um, not sure how good you're going to see this, but you know, maybe in the graphics we'll throw something out there. There's rim notches in this bender. It's hard to see, but there's rim notches that tell us. That's where that measurement goes. It does not go on the arrow. It goes on 
the rim notch. We bend that reference at 45 degrees. Then we spin the pipe, slide it down, and we end up with this orientation of the bender. Now we're going to use the arrow for the B mark. You're going to bend this B mark at 22 and a half degrees, which is half the degrees of the A mark. Then you're going to take the pipe out, put it in the other side, put the arrow on the C mark, and bend it to 22 and a half degrees. And this should be a flat plane from here to here with a raise of four inches in the center. That's the ideal. It'll take you a couple times to get this right, and every time you do it, you might have to tweak it a little bit to make sure it lays flat. 